Hi friends, welcome once again in another episode of Daily Berib. Up to this point, we have learned the definition of the Daily Berib and the first principle and uh, how to find the Daily Berib by the first principle. We also learned that, right? And we learned the Daily Berib of the sin x, Daily Berib of the tan x, cot x, uh, and now we are going to follow the Daily Berib of the sec x also, right? So, what is exactly the Daily Berib of the sec x? Uh, let me let me show you this from the graph, right? It will be more clear, right? So this is the derivative, uh, sorry, uh, the graph of the sec x actually, right? This is the graph of the sec x here. X represents the actually angle, right? These these all are the angles varies, and uh, uh, it's totally different, right? This this figure is uh, this uh, the de uh, means the graph of the sec x is totally different than the sine and the cos and tan, right? It's totally different, right? It's like this. So here the derivative of the cos x sec x at any point, right? Suppose at any point of the x, at any point of the x means simply, uh, suppose uh, suppose you are finding out the derivative at this point, uh, means almost up, uh, up to here or up to this point. It means simply, uh, suppose uh, uh, yeah, uh, it means simply that is the first draw the tangent over here at this point tangent, and the slope of the tangent at particular point is exactly the derivative at that point. Right or or simply you say the derivative of the cob or derivative of the sec x cob at particular point right is exactly the the slope of the cob exactly that point right or simply you can say at this point how this y and this x is changing means how this y change is taking place with according to the uh, uh, with respect to the x bar or you can say simply the rate of the change of the function or rate of the change of this curve at this particular point is the derivative of the sec x exactly right so i think you understand what is the derivative of uh, sec x actually right so uh, let's go and uh, what is the derivative of the sec x let's find it here right and from the uh, derivative uh, 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 from the derivative uh, 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 something uh, definitions what we have learned that uh, derivative of the any function is equals to limit when h tends to 0 uh, f of x plus h minus fx whole divided by h here h is a small change right and as i told you already also here in the place of s you uh, h you may see some somewhere uh, some books in books delta x tends to zero. Uh, your may teacher has your your teacher may have taught you like delta x tends to zero. So here will be now delta x, right? So both the same thing here delta x and h both means that a small change in this x, right? So uh, anyways, let's go ahead and here our function is here, right? Our function is here f x is equals to sec x, right? Uh, in this function, you know. Uh, whatever you insert here, we we get just like this sec x, right? If you insert here, suppose uh, suppose five, right? Five degree. Generally here, x represents the angle, right? Suppose you are uh, inserting here five degree, then you will be getting five degree. If you insert here eight degree, you will be getting eight degree. You will be inserting here two hundred, then you will be getting two hundred. Whatever you insert, you will get that base, right? So now I'm going to insert the x plus h, a small change in h, right? So uh, it will be now f of x plus h, right? F of x plus h will be just equals to sec x plus h. Right, it will be just like this. So that's why now I'm going to uh, uh, use uh, uh, use um, uh, use this formula in this in, uh, in this function, right? In this function. So what I will be getting derivative of the function f x, right? Uh, or simply derivative of sec x, right? Derivative of the sec x is equals to, or we can also represent sometime. Uh, we can also represent like this sec x by dx is equals to, right? Limit when h tends to 0 right and f of x plus h now here f of x plus h is equals to sec x plus h right so sec x plus h minus fx fx is here now equals to sec x right so it will be sec x right and then whole divided by h right so let's solve this right and now, uh, generally, what we used to do, as in the previous uh, videos, also uh, we have learned, and in trigonometry chapter, also what we used to do, generally we used to convert the sec and the uh, cos sec, it is all into the sine and cos, right? A tan, cot, everything we used to convert in sine and cos. That makes us easier to solve, right? So it's trigonometric expression. So I'm again converting this sec into the cos, right? Because sec is just uh, one upon cos, the reciprocal of the cos. So that's why one upon cos x plus h, right? minus 1 upon uh, sec x will be now 1 upon cos x right 1 upon cos x whole divided by this h right 
so uh, oh there is no place so let me do it here right I think you're watching this properly great let me let me make a little bit more up upside right okay fine so here now right limit adds tends to zero here what can we do right let me tell you one thing Wh what do we do in uh, uh, in normal uh, small classes we uh, 1 upon 2 and 1 upon 3 if I I if it is like this then what do we used to do we used to take the algebra of 2 and 3 that is 6 and then we used to divide this 6 this this 6 by the 2 and when we divide this 6 by 2 we'll get 3 and whatever we left in the numerator we used to multiply by this right and again minus 3 will be multiplying the 6 so we'll be getting 2 and then whatever is there in numerator that will multiply this so we used to generally solve like this in a small classes so the same thing I'm doing here right so here uh, first I have to take the LCM of the cos x plus h and the cos x so it is cos x plus h times cos x well now this cos x h as here uh, this 2 was dividing this 6 so cos x plus s now is dividing this cos x plus s dot cos x so we'll be getting cos x right we'll be getting cos x and since there is 1 so I'm not uh, there is no need to multiply by 1 right but still I'm doing right uh, again this cos x this cos x will divide this whole part the cos x and we'll be getting cos x plus h we'll be getting cos x plus h again times 1 but it's not necessary to write the times uh, 1 right now I can do easily with lots of space I used to do lots of messy work <laughs> I'm sorry for that okay limit h tends to 0 right now cos x oh, oh, oh it's whole divided by h we forget this right now cos x minus cos x plus h right and what I want to say we, we have learned that a upon b in algebra that a upon b divided by whole divided by c is equals to a upon whole divided by or a upon simply bc so here this is this this whole part this whole part will work as a, a right and this part will work as a b then and this part is work as a, this this will work as a c so hold this a divided by bc I can write I mean to say uh, this upon cos x times sorry cos x plus h times cos x and then this h this is a part right uh, I mean this this whole was a part this was B part and this C part right so now what I can do, do right uh, how to solve this now uh, in trigonometry chapter what we had learned uh, C uh, what we learned once that cos C time minus right cos D is equals to what we had learned it is equals to 2 times sine C plus D upon 2 times sin d minus c upon 2 this formula we had learned in trigonometry chapter so here also this is just like cos c minus cos d right so this x plus h will work as a d right this is d and this x will work as a c so cos c minus cos d i can write and uh, i'm just doing this right so limit when h tends to zero now see two times right sine c plus d sine c c that is x plus d that is x plus h whole divided by 2 right again times sine d minus c right sine d d is the x plus h right minus c that is x and then whole divided by 2 again right and then whole this divided by cos x plus h right times cos x times h so uh, now let's do limit when h tends to 0 right uh, now see w w what's happening over here my plus x and my minus x will cancel and now I'm left with 2 times sine x plus x that is 2x right and then h whole divided by 2 again sin h upon 2 right okay let me write it in the bracket and then whole divided by cos x plus h right times cos x times the h right but uh, let me separate it h 
and you know friend uh, 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 what I mean to say uh, something uh, something like a upon right this a upon b by c can be written as a times c divided by b right so here uh, this this whole part uh, let me do it on another color right this whole part this whole part suppose 1 and this 2 is 1 right so you can imagine this is a uh, sorry uh, here now uh, as per this you can imagine this as a, a and this as a c right so and this 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 part as the b this part as the b so c times a upon b right just like this c times a upon b can be also written as a upon b times c right is c times a or a times a that's the same thing right can also be written as a upon right can also be written as can also be written as a this a upon that is that is sine uh, sine 2x plus h whole divided by 2 time sine h by 2 a whole divided by right whole divided by b upon c that is b upon c that is 2 right great I think you understand this now and cos x plus h times cos x right and limit h tends to 0 now I, I'm going to insert the value of uh, h right I'm just going to plug the value of h now and uh, here what I want to show uh, just let me take this in bracket it will be more better and in in limit chapter in introduction of the limit uh, we have what we have proved that when theta tends to 0 sine theta divided by theta is equals to 1 right this we have proved there so here this h upon 2 is just like the theta and this is just like the theta right so when h tends to 0 of course h upon 2 will also tends to 0 right so I can also write here h upon 2 tends to 0 if you want right so simply uh, what we can get here uh, I'm just plugging the value of h so this whole part will be going to be equals to 1 this 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 part will be going to equals to 1 right and here times sine 2x plus this h will be 0 now divided by 2 right yeah let me take in bracket now cos this is x plus this h is the 0 right this part has been 0 now so 0 times cos x right so what we get here sign this now see this is nothing so 2 and 2 will cancel out sine x divided by this cos x right times cos x so there is nothing then we can also write here 1 right simply so 1 can multiply any 1 so sine x upon cos x that's equals to tan x right because sine upon cos is equals to tan right and one thing one more thing we know that 1 upon cos is equals to 1 upon sec right so 1 upon cos x will be now equals to sec x so what we got we got the derivative of the sec x right equals to tan x times sec x so remember this formula it's a really important formula in derivative we, we have a lot of use of this formula and finally uh, uh, finally in uh, when we'll solving a lot of problem only finding out the derivative of the a lot of trigonometric functions then we'll be using as a formula so keep these things in the mind right and now in the next video we're left with the final and the last uh, uh, the trigonometric ratio that's cosec x right and we are going to find out the derivative of the cosec x in the next video right uh, I hope you'll be joining me in the next video also bye bye